So I'll, um, I think this, this is going a little bit out of order. We, I should have probably gone before Samuel, but I'll give you guys a quick uh, update on Cove. Uh, I'll try to dive a little bit, give you a, a quick dive into the ISA. Obviously, we don't have enough time to go over everything, but just give you a quick uh, glimpse of like what's going on in the task group right now on the ISA and non-ISA uh, sides. Atish obviously couldn't be here uh, because of visa issues, so he, he might be online. Um, so uh, the quick TLDR is like the, there's an ISA spec um, in RISC V to support the notion of confidential computing, but it's built in such a way to not just enable confidential compute, but the general notion of running isolated TCBs. Okay, that, that's sort of the property we want from the, the ISA. And that ISA extension is a privisa extension. So as you know, RISC V has a privisa and an unprivisa. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a privisa extension called supervisor domains so that you can run the ability, you can, you can have the ability for software to instantiate separate supervisor domains. And, and I'll show you a picture to, uh, to get that across. And that works with a bunch of other uh, existing ratified extensions like the hypervisor extension, um, where we can use uh, the notion of enabling um, the hypervisor support, hardware uh, virtualization support in RISC-V. Um, and um, you know, there, there is like a lot of work being done on the QMU side to get the emulation of this ISA in place as it goes towards ratification. Uh, as, as Samuel clarified, a lot of these specs are in that early pre-ratification stage, but we're getting close to like the task group sort of completing their work. So they will, they will sort of move into what is called a stable stage. And then after that, there's a public review stage where a lot of the uh, open source discussion happens. Um, the, second, uh, the second part uh, is the uh, ratification of uh, an ABI or a non-ISA spec, which is sort of where use cases come in, right? So the supervisor domains ISA extension, like I said, is completely agnostic of whether you're running confidential domains or just creating security service domains on RISC V. The Cove ABI is a confidential VM extension ABI that sort of adds that non-ISA software aspect for the interfaces to Linux and KVM and other, other things. Um, and that brings in that, that, you know, the confidential VM extension use case on, on RISC V. And that you, is expected to use this super, super supervisor domains uh, ISA. Right? So I'll sort of give you a, give, a quick glimpse into the, um, the ISA. Um, in five minutes. Um, so, so as you know, like this is sort of a, a quick picture of like the, the, the privilege level supported in RISC V along with the hypervisor extension shown on the right, right, which essentially gives you additional controls in the supervisor mode to be able to run hardware virtualized uh, guests on, uh, on top of RISC V. Um, and essentially what supervisor domains does is keeps the same, you know, privisor so that software that's written to run within uh, supervisor mode, user mode, is largely uh, unmodified, right? Modular, some of the supervisor mode enlightenments we talk about like with other architectures, uh, but it gives you that sort of horizontal isolation on the platform, right? Uh, so that you can essentially create one or more supervisor domain contexts, right? Which usages can use for various different things, right? Um, and what, what we sort of identified is a set of privisor extensions so that we can enable this notion of having parallel supervisor domain contexts running because you know, this requires a, a proper way to do scalable memory isolation across the platform, which RISC-V previously only had physical memory, uh, you know, uh, registers to do static physical memory isolation, uh, and also requires capabilities to work with the RISC-V IOMMU, which was recently ratified, right, as well as do secure interrupts uh, across these supervisor domains. So there's a set of extensions related to, to supervisor domains. Um, again, I'm going to give you a quick glimpse. The specs are all online. They are, like I said, in the, in the review phase right now. Um, so, so supervisor domain essentially adds a memory tracking table, right, which gives us this scalable physical memory isolation at different page sizes. It nicely composes with the SV architecture of RISC-V so that if you have first level paging or second level paging turned on, the memory tracking table will work with that, right, and sort of give you the ability to do scalable physical memory isolation across domains. Um, it also gives you the ability to um, use new fence instructions so that when you're tagging things for a particular supervisor domains in the TLB, you have the ability to perform fencing. These come in use, obviously, when we are doing private to shared translations and things like that, again, which is specific to a particular use case, or you can go with a very static uh, allocation of physical memory isolation. Uh, the second, so this is the SMMTT extension. If folks are familiar with the, the, the terminology in RISC-V, 
S stands for supervisor, the next M is M mode, and then the memory tracking table, right? So there's a nomenclature for all these ISA extensions. So this is sort of a quick view into how the table structure is set up. It's very much biased towards large page sizes and really compacting the permissions for physical memory so that you can have read, write, execute permissions on a per page basis and you can choose whatever page sizes your, uh, your architecture supports. Right. Um, the other extension uh, to kind of give this, the sort of the, a, a, a very clean mapping both from the IO side and the hard side or the CPU side for RISC V is called an IO MTT. So as I said earlier, I won't, I'm not showing you the picture of the IO MMU that's already ratified in RISC V, but it supports the notion of device context tables and passives and things like that that people here are generally familiar with. Um, what we are adding here is essentially the additional set of you know, minor extensions we need so that when supervisor domains are active and an IO MMU is assigned to a particular supervisor domain, the, the access control is, is provided through the MTT structures, you essentially need an extension called an IO MTT that can take a, a device request coming in on the fabric, let's take PCIe, let's take a device request coming in with RID, it can be mapped to a corresponding supervisor domain and that will allow the hardware request to find the corresponding MTT and, and perform the translation, right? So just want to give you a feel for, uh, you know, how the, the mapping is done both from the IO side accesses and the, the hard side accesses. Um, I won't touch upon this since we don't have time. The, the gist of this slide is like, there is a advanced arch interrupt architecture spec that's ratified in RISC V that gives you the ability to over provision interrupt files, you know, whether you're using supervisor mode or supervisor with hypervisor mode, right? And this, this extension uh, in the supervisor domain spec is to essentially allow M mode to separate out supervisor domain interrupt controllers and assign them to supervisor domains, but through these new notifications, still retain the control to essentially get control on the platform when an interrupt comes in for a supervisor domain that may not be scheduled, right? So this is very akin to, if you're familiar with the flows like posted interrupts and things like that, where you have a notification vector, you have the ability to essentially get a notification vector into the, into the root domain, and then it can schedule whatever supervisor domain it wants to schedule. Right? Um, so with that, I'll stop here. Uh, there is actually a long presentation that we did uh, this week uh, at the beginning in the Linux uh, Security Summit for people who want like a lot more of the gory details on the ABI and the ISA mechanism. I would encourage uh, feedback on that as we, as we go forward towards ratification.